In this last video of my recent series on scrapers, I'm showing you a number of specialty scrapers that I use. Sometimes they're one-trick ponies, but uh, they, they get me out of a jam for a specific task. Hi, y'all. Welcome to my shop. My name is Mike Peace, and I'm passionate about wood turning, and I want to show you some tips, tricks, techniques, and projects that will help you become a better, better turner. If this is something you're interested in, hit the subscribe button. As, we've covered in, as we have covered in previous videos, slicing will almost always give you a better surface than, than scraping. But there's times in your, on a wood turning project where you just can't slice with a conventional tool and scraping is the answer. And sometimes this requires a special purpose tool. If you've got a tool that's not working for you, feel free to change it and maybe this will give you some ideas. There's lots of ways of cutting a dovetail if you don't have tailstock support up against it blocking the way. But when you got a tailstock, you need something special. And a lot of uh, ones you buy don't, uh, don't work. So I made this one out of a half-inch uh, old Harbor Freight uh, scraper or skew. And uh, I did a video on this. Now here's an example of a specialty scraper I made out of a out of a file for a production run of knobs in order that I could make this profile. The trick is grinding dry, grinding the pattern to the profile that you want. Now, uh, extreme caution when using files. I'm not urging you to go out and, and get a bunch of files, turn it to scrapers. The trick is, uh, it's very hard, but because of the file pattern, it does have a tendency to uh, fracture or possibly shatter under extreme stress. So you don't want to extend over the tool rest, but just a very short distance. And when I'm doing it, it's only extending it uh, over a distance of less than a, an inch. So it works, it works very well. Here's my spear point scraper I showed in a previous uh, video, reground from a Harbor Freight uh, skew, and it, it works very well. Uh, you can go to either the left or the right on the outside of the bowl. Here's a smaller one I made out of a half inch skew. Uh, I use this more of a V making V grooves and specialized cuts, but it can also be used for uh, not only V V cuts, but getting in where uh, you can't get in somewhere uh, like this. You have lots of different choices when it comes to tools that, that can accomplish the same thing. Uh, both this point tool and this half inch V uh, spear point scraper can both make uh, V grooves in, in bowls or, or boxes. However, the point tool does a better job on actually uh, making beads. In this example, I'm using my wide parting tool to uh, hollow this opening in a, a collet. Here I'm using a Sorby box scraper. It, does, it is not a negative rake, and it's used for cleaning up sides and also along the uh, bottom of uh, flat flat boxes. This next one is one I reground from a Harbor Freight tool. Scraper, a uh, little less than 90 degrees, sharpened on on this bevel and this bevel. So I, if I hit the bottom, uh, I won't have both sides cutting at the same time. Take it in a couple of passes. Here's a couple of round nose uh, uh, scrapers, uh, otherwise known as Dale Nish style scrapers. The one on the top uh, was a completely different type of scraper and I found uh, no use for it whatsoever so I reground it. So if you have a tool and it doesn't do you, do you uh, for what you want to do, feel free to change it and make it work for you, especially if it's just sitting there gathering dust. The one on the bottom is a piece of Chinese steel from a Harbor Freight set. I think it might have been a, a half inch skew. Uh, and I recently uh, changed it into a negative rake. You can see that I have a put a slight top bevel around on the top, and that makes it a little less aggressive. I'm going to uh, use that a little bit before I convert the top one, and maybe I'll leave the top one the way it is. This is a great scraper for getting uh, behind the shoulder in very small hollow forms or, or a small box, and it, it does very well for uh, hollow form a hollow globe ornament such as such as this one for being able to get down in there and get deep and still have a lot of lot of stability. And this shows how I use this scraper on hollowing the behind the shoulder of a, a box. 
I lift it up slightly uh, to the left to reduce the aggressiveness. This is one of my favorite scrapers, this little point tool. Uh, it doesn't have to be ground exactly. It's made from high speed steel, uh, quarter inch. Great for making little, little grooves for uh, burn marks. Uh, it's also uh, very handy to, to use for turning, turning beads uh, on, a, on a box such as this. I show how to make this in an earlier video. Here's an example of how handy it is on a box, using it as a scraper to kind of clean off the top surface of a box or the rim of a box. It's also great for making little uh, detailing on the bottom of a, a bowl on side grain. You can also use it uh, here as making little little V grooves or making beads on the top of a, of a box. And of course, there's always the uh, negative raker, a uh, negative rake skew. Uh, laying the skew on its side as as we deal here to get into doing the detail of a box. Uh, uh, here I'm using a 10 threads per inch uh, thread chaser, uh, mail chaser, to cut little uniform beads in the bottom on the side of this bowl. You, know, you might begin to get a, a true bead, but this works well when you're having small beads in, in groupings. This little cove tool can be very handy. I use it uh, primarily to create a little cove to use the uh, Dremel uh, texturing uh, tool as, as shown, shown here. Here's a variety of uh, tools that I made for doing captive rings. Uh, from the right, uh, it's a piece of bar stock uh, with a negative rake on both sides so it can do left or right. Then I've got the one that I call the cat's claw that's made out of a quarter inch piece of high speed steel. Uh, and then I've got three of them out of Allen wrenches and they do they can do fairly well. And then to the far left I have one that a friend of mine gave me made out of a, a dental pick. But basically it's a uh, negative rake scraper. There's, there's several different tools you can use for uh, captive rings. There's specialty tools you can buy, but here's a couple I made, one from an Allen wrench, and it comes down to a pretty sharp point. Keep in mind that when you use an Allen wrench, it's pretty tough steel, it'll hold an edge for a while. Uh, you've got to cut that tip off. Bring it back or you'll have too much torque. And in this case, I've made this fairly aggressive down to a point, uh, but it's fairly thick here. Here's one, I think, a little bit better that I made from a 8 inch by 1 quarter inch uh, round high-speed steel tool bit from Enco. They're about three and a half bucks for that, those blanks. Uh, they're big enough where you just about cut them in half and make two different tools, which is... the reground profile of two Harbor Freight uh, spindle gouges. Uh, the one on the right is a quarter inch, one on the left is three eighths inch. And they were both pieces of crap that wouldn't hold an edge. So I decided I would just regrind them with a very flat grind on the bottom and turn them into uh, beading tools. Here's a series of scrapers I use in thread chasing. Yes, the second and third one from the top are thread chasers. They are actually scrapers and I, I ground them with a slight bevel on top to uh, make them uh, negative rake scrapers. Uh, at the top is an inside out tool. Uh, I got this idea from Sam Angelo. Of course he's going to give credit to uh, Alan Batty and it's used for uh, hollowing uh, fast removal of wood in, in making uh, boxes. At the bottom are two recess tools, one of them made from a large Allen wrench and then one made from a 8 millimeter bar of high speed steel. It's actually the same stock that I use to make a, uh, a wide parting, parting tool. So I have a recess tool I made out of some uh, 8 millimeter. I'm going to provide a link here to this complete series uh, scraper uh, series to make it easier if you missed some of the earlier versions. That's uh, did one on conventional uh, ten tips for conventional uh, bowl scrapers, 
did one on negative scraping, one on shear scraping, and then this one. And of course, there was a, uh, a little short lead-off uh, uh, video, which actually makes, makes five. Uh, so I'll provide that link here, here at the end. So y'all stay safe and come on back here.